आय एम प्रोफेसर राजेंद्र कोरांदे फ्रॉम माय यूट्यूब चॅनल टीच इजी इन धिस व्हिडिओ वी विल सी द बार्स ऑफ वेअरिंग क्रॉस सेक्शन मेनी अ टाइम्स द क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ द बार चेंजेस अलॉंग इट्स लेंथ समटाइम्स द मटेरियल्स आर ऑल्सो डिफरंट फॉर द डिफरंट पार्ट्स सो सच बार्स आर नोन ॲज बार्स ऑफ वेअरिंग क्रॉस सेक्शन इन दिस व्हिडिओ वी विल सी हाऊ द स्ट्रेसेस आर डेव्हलप्ड इन दोज बार्स ऑफ वेअरिंग क्रॉस सेक्शन अँड वॉट आर द डिफॉर्मेशन ऑफ डिफरंट पार्ट्स ऑफ दॅट बार ऑफ वेअरिंग क्रॉस सेक्शन ओके सो लेट अस सी हिअर यू कॅन सी हिअर ए बी सी डी इज अ बार ऑफ वेअरिंग क्रॉस सेक्शन क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया ऑफ ए बी इज डिफरंट बी सी इज डिफरंट सी डी इज डिफरंट लेट अस से दिस इज पार्ट नंबर वन पार्ट नंबर टू अँड पार्ट नंबर थ्री नाव दिस ए बी सी डी इज अ बार ऑफ वेअरिंग क्रॉस सेक्शन विच इज सब्जेक्टेड टू द ॲक्शियल फोर्स ऑर ॲक्शियल लोड पी नाव हिअर if i say that l1 is length of part number 1 a1 is cross sectional area of part number 1 and e1 is modulus of elasticity of material of part number 1 similarly l2 a2 e2 for part number 2 and l3 a3 e3 for part number 3 now in this case axial pull p is applied at the end so final deformation of the bar will be elongation no doubt about it now in this case each part 1 2 and 3 are in equilibrium for that purpose let us consider free body diagram of 1 2 and 3 that is body or part 1 2 and 3 separately so if p is the pull applied on this side for equilibrium this will also be p similarly this will be p this will be p this will be p and this will be p if we use method of superposition if you overlap this part over here you can see this is b this is b so this p and p will balance each other and there will not be any force shown at this joint similar is the case for c this p and p will balance each other therefore there is no so when the bar of wearing cross section is subjected to axial forces at the ends each part of that bar will be subjected to the same force with magnitude and nature for each part so here you can say ab is subjected to pull that is tension so it will elongate bc will also subjected to pull p it will elongate cd will also be subjected to pull p so it will also elongate so what will be the net deformation net deformation will be definitely elongation it will be elongation of part 1 plus elongation of part 2 plus elongation of part 3 therefore delta l is equal to delta l1 plus delta l2 plus delta l3 we already saw the simple expression for finding out change in length that is pl upon ee therefore for part number 1 pl1 upon a1 e1 pl2 upon a2 e2 and pl3 upon a3 e3 you can very easily see that each part is subjected to force p so instead of p1 p2 p3 everywhere it is p now in some cases if all the parts are of same material material of part 1 2 and 
if it is same then value of e for the 3 will be same therefore e1 e2 and e3 will be e so p and e can be taken common so delta l will be p upon e into bracket l1 upon a1 plus l2 upon a2 plus l3 upon a3 so on therefore this is how you can find out the deformation of each part and net deformation similarly you can find out stress induced in each part stress induced in part 1 will be p upon a1 in part 2 will be p upon a2 in part 3 will be p upon a3 as p is constant here it is very clear that for the portion of minimum area stress will be maximum and for portion of maximum area stress will be minimum because area is in denominator so this is how we can find out stress induced in each part of bar of wearing cross section as well as deformation of each part and then deformation now let us solve some problems on it okay so let us take the first problem a metal bar as shown in the figure is subjected to a pull of 40 kilo newton so this is a pull 40 kilo newton find the total elongation of the bar take value of e as 1.5 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square also calculate maximum stress induced in the bar so this is exactly similar to this case this is part number one whose length is 200 mm, whose diameter is 40 mm. Part number 2, 250 mm, its diameter is 25 mm. Part number 3 of length 160 mm and its diameter is 45 mm. And the pull applied is 40 kN. So this is same as the pull is applied at the end. Each part 1, 2 and 3 is subjected to pull of 40 kN. So net deformation will be elongation which is asked in this one okay let us see how to solve it it is very simple here p1 is equal to p2 is equal to p3 is equal to p that is 40 into 10 raised to 3 newton into 10 raised to 3 for converting kilo newton into newton also the material of all the three parts are same so e1 is equal to e2 is equal to e3 is equal to e is equal to 1.5 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square now let us calculate the cross sectional areas as diameter is given a1 is equal to pi into 40 square by 4 which comes out to be 1256.64 mm square a2 similarly pi d square by 4 comes out to be 490.87 mm square and a3 pi d square by 4 1590.43 mm square now we want to find out total elongation total elongation will be delta l definitely delta l will be equal to elongation of 1 delta l1 plus elongation of 2 delta l2 plus elongation of 3 delta l3 okay so delta L is equal to now here P and E are constant so you can take them common so what is the formula for delta L P L upon E so P upon E into bracket L1 upon A1 plus L2 upon A2 plus L3 upon A3 if you substitute the value of L1 as 200 A1 as 1256.64 L2 as 250 a2 as 490.87, L3 as 160 and A3 as 1590.43 and if you calculate you will get it as 0.205 mm. Now as it is subjected to pull this change in length will be increase that is elongation. Okay. So nature of total deformation will be same as the nature of load. If this load is compressive that is push then this will be decrease now we are also asked to calculate maximum stress induced in the bar now stress is equal to load upon area here in each case load is same so stress will be maximum 
for the portion where area will be minimum. So you can see that area 2 is minimum. So as A2 is minimum, maximum stress will be induced in part 2 of the bar. Okay, in this part 2. And what is maximum stress? P upon A2. P is 40 into 10 raised to 3 upon A2 is 490.87, which comes out to be 81.49 Newton per mm square. This is how we have calculated total elongation and the maximum stress induced, which is induced in part number 2. Let us go for one more example, which is different than this. So, let us see what is that. A brass bar of cross-sectional area 1000 mm square is subjected to axial forces as shown. Find the net deformation of the bar if E is 105 giga Pascal GPA. Now this is different than this. So what is the difference? In the previous problems, the loads were, forces were applied at the end. So each part was subjected to same force of magnitude and nature. Here it is different. You can very easily see that A, B, C, D is a bar whose cross-sectional area is 1000 mm square. So A1, A2, A3 are same. A, B, I will say part 1, A, part 2 and part 3. Here you can very easily see that the loads are not only applied at the ends, but loads are applied at the junctions of the parts also. Okay, so here we will have to first find out what is the force which is acting on a particular portion. So for that purpose, again, let us draw the free body diagram. So this is free body diagram of part one, part two and part three. Now let us see how these forces are calculated. This is very important. Now this 50 kilo Newton for first part to be in equilibrium, this must be 50 kilo Newton. So part number one is subjected to pull of 50 kilo Newton. So P1 is equal to 50 kilo Newton and it is in tension. So it will increase. Similarly, part number three, here it is 10 kilo Newton for equilibrium. This will be 10 kilo Newton. So this is push. So part number three is subjected to push of 10 kilo Newton. So P3 is equal to 10 kilo Newton and it is subjected to compression. So it will decrease that is its delta L will be negative. Now about the central portion. Now look here. This is 50. This is 80. So when this will be overlap, this will be 80. So this is 50. So 80 minus 50, 30. So when you will overlap this point over here, 50 plus 30 will be 80. If they are in same direction, they will be added. If they are in opposite direction, they will be subtracted. Now, let's so look here. This 10 is already done, but it is 20. 10 to the right, 20 to the left. So, it should be 30 to the left. Okay. As this is 30, this must be 30. So, when 30 to the left, 10 to the right, means 30 minus 10, that is 20 kilo Newton. So part number two is also subjected to a push of 30 kilo Newton. So it will decrease. So this is most important portion, which is different from the previous problem. In previous problem, only forces at the ends were acting. So each part was subjected to same load and nature was also same. Here nature can be different. Here it is tension, compression, compression. Okay. So once you understand this, now it is very clear. Always keep in mind this is in equilibrium. So total force to the left must be equal to total force to the right. Total force to the right is 80 kilo Newton. To the left 50 plus 20 plus 10, 80 kilo Newton. Because in some problems you must be given it as P and find out the P. So for P, what you will do sigma fx is equal to 0, that is total force towards right must be equal to total force towards left. Now let us calculate the net deformation. Here we cannot say whether it is elongation or contraction. If the answer comes as plus, it will be increase or elongation. If it comes as minus, it will be decrease or contraction. 
okay wherever pull is applied we will take that as plus wherever it is push it will be minus so here a1 plus a2 plus a3 are same that is 1000 p1 is equal to plus 50 why plus because it is tension p2 is equal to minus 30 why minus because it is compression and p3 is equal to minus 10 then e is also same e1 e2 e3 105 as this is in gpa we will keep this is in kilo newton no need of convert okay now we want to find out delta l delta l is algebraic summation of deformation of part one deformation of part two deformation of part three so delta l is equal to delta l1 plus delta l2 plus delta l3 now a and e are constant so it is a e not written a1 a1 a2 e2 because they are same so one upon area is 1000 e is 105 okay we will keep the forces in kilo newton so e will be in gpa now what is p1 50 what is l1 into 800 plus p2 what is p2 minus because it is compression into 300 plus p3 is also minus minus 10 into 1200 so if you do it it will come out to be minus 0 0.019 mm as it is minus it means that the net deformation will be decreased that is contraction therefore the answer is 0 0.019 mm decrease so this is how we can calculate the stresses induced in the different parts of bars of various cross section and we can also find out their deformations and net deformation okay do you follow this so with this we will stop in this video in the next video we will discuss about the composite sections thank you